Other countries have expressed concern over the leaks at Fukushima Daiichi. Prime Minister Abe announced earlier this month the situation is under control, but the governor of Tokyo isn't so sure. Prime Minister Abe declared in Buenos Aires that the situation at Fukushima is under control. But that's not necessarily the case. The important thing is that the Prime Minister expressed his determination to deal with the problems. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Tokyo Governor Naoki Inose praised Abe that his word helped allay worries about the leakage problem, and he said he expects the ad administration to do all it can to solve the problem. If I wanted a joke, I'd follow you into the john and watch you take a leak. Prime Minister Abe also asked TEPCO on Thursday to decommission the number five and six reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Japan's industry minister Toshimitsu Motegi supported the idea. Decommissioning number five and six reactors will create additional space. More tanks can be set up there to store contaminated wastewater. He also said during the decommissioning process, TEPCO could use the two facilities to train its engineers. Motegi said such training is impossible at the damaged number one to four reactors due to high levels of radiation. The number five and six reactors were not damaged by the 2011 quake and tsunami, unlike the plant's other four. But local municipalities have been demanding that TEPCO decommission them. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announced last month that the government would take the lead in cleaning up the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The plant's operator has set a tentative deadline for the decontamination of radioactive water, but engineers at the troubled facility will face major hurdles trying to meet that goal. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata reports. You couldn't make this shit up! Abe on Thursday paid his second visit to the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The visit was apparently in response to international concerns over whether the situation at the site is really under control. TEPCO's president said they'll complete the decontamination of radioactive water in fiscal 2014. TEPCO officials say some 440,000 tons of wastewater are present in building basements and storage tanks on the site. 15,000 tons or more has accumulated in underground tunnels. Workers store 400 more tons of radioactive water every day. The problem was caused by massive amounts of groundwater pouring into the damaged complex. Engineers had expected a water filtering facility called the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, would reduce the amount of radioactive water. The facility was designed to filter out most of the radioactive elements. Workers gave it a test run in March. Abe toured the building that houses the ALPS. Operators say they found holes in the machinery caused by corrosion. Abe says the government will build another water filtering facility. A TEPCO official says that will enable the utility to decontaminate 1,500 tons of radioactive water every day. Company officials must also find a way to remove radioactive tritium from the water. They admit the goal of completing the decontamination by March 2015 will be tough to meet. What you have just witnessed may have shocked, startled, or disturbed you. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe apologizes for nothing.
Government officials have highlighted yet another problem for workers at Fukushima Daiichi and other nuclear facilities nearby. They've analyzed the results of physical exams and say they've seen an increase in health problems. Officials with the health ministry analyzed the results of physicals for the first time. Around 6,700 workers who deal with radiation had the checkups last year. Most reportedly work at nuclear power plants. The officials say more than 4% of those workers had health problems, such as high white blood cell counts. That's four times the proportion who had health issues in 2010, before the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Still, the officials say they can't easily compare the old and new results. They say the nuclear facilities have replaced 70% of their staff over the past three years. Workers with health problems had to undergo more detailed tests or have treatment. Ministry officials plan to conduct a survey to learn more about the impact of radiation. But Workers with health problems had to undergo more detailed tests or have treatment. Ministry officials plan to conduct a survey to learn more about the impact of radiation. Engineers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are closer to solving a mystery that's worried people around the world. They spent weeks trying to figure out why radioactive water leaked from a steel storage tank. Now they found a possible cause, loose bolts. More than 300 tons of contaminated water leaked last month from a tank on the Fukushima Daiichi site. Some of that water may have made its way into the Pacific Ocean. The engineers began dismantling the tank this week in hopes of finding clues. They discovered five bolts holding steel plates together at the bottom of the tank were loose. They say that probably caused the leak. Still, they plan to check rusty plates and deformed resins in case water also escaped there. Fukushima Daiichi has more than 300 similar tanks, all holding radioactive water. Engineers fear those containers could have similar defects. But they say they can't check or reinforce them or replace them all at the same time. For the time being, they're promising to monitor the tanks more closely. Industry ministry staff have been wrestling with a challenge stemming from Japan's decades of nuclear power generation. They proposed a plan to deal with nuclear waste. About 1,700 cylinders of the waste are stored in facilities at a village in northern Japan. Government estimates suggest all the nuclear waste in the country would fill 25,000 cylinders. The waste is highly radioactive and would kill a person within 20 seconds of exposure. It'll stay toxic for tens of thousands of years. The government plans to encase each cylinder in cement and bury them roughly 300 meters underground. But Japanese scientists warn it would be difficult to find an appropriate location because of the risk of earthquakes and volcanic activity. Industry ministry staff are suggesting putting the waste underground and retrieving it if concerns later arise about its safety. They say it could also be holed up if technology is developed that could reduce its toxicity. What's the worst that could happen when you get out there and try? try, you fail, you gotta gamble, you gotta take chances, oh, don't spend your whole life chasing that white whale, don't spend your whole life, what's the worst that could happen, what's the very, very worst, in order for the worst
that's the worst that can happen You feel sad a couple days You pick yourself up Bow your head and give thanks That happened was the very, very worst. In order for the worst to happen, you gotta just do something first. So, what's the worst that could happen? When you get out there and try, you know your life could suddenly just end. In the blink of an eye In the blink of an eye In the blink of an eye What's the worst that could happen When you get out there and try You know your life Suddenly just end In the blink of an eye So what's the worst that could happen try, you fail, you gotta gamble, you gotta take the woman set to be the next U.S. ambassador to Japan says she intends to follow the advice of her father, the late President John F. Kennedy. Carolyn Kennedy says if she's confirmed, she'll work to increase ties in line with her father's wishes. If confirmed as ambassador, I would be humbled to carry forward his legacy in a small way and represent the powerful bonds that unite our two democratic societies. Kennedy testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. It was the first time she has publicly discussed policies on Japan. She said she visited Hiroshima in 1978 with her uncle, the late Senator Edward Kennedy. She said the U.S. alliance with Japan remains the cornerstone of peace, stability and prosperity in Asia. And she said she can think of no other country in which she would rather serve. I will work to increase exchanges between American and Japanese students, scholars, and citizens so that future generations will understand our shared history and continue to bind our nations closer. If confirmed, Kennedy would become the first woman to serve as U.S. Ambassador to Japan. How do you write women so well? I think of a man, and I take away reason and accountability.